you know, I I like new new guy very much. He uh, he 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 not bright, but uh, he he very tall, and uh, we, we we can get him do many things. Uh, be very funny. I have perfect hazing for for new guy very tall. We have him get the uh, the box. Oh, I, I, like I, Anthony. Anthony. Got those new supplies, guys. But what's in this? Holy crap! Hey, you know what? He, it, it's gonna all fall on his head right now. Yes. We might have a death. Right yeah, now in the he, show. He falls down, it'd, it'd be very fun. Alright, let's go. Hey, Steve! Up there? Yeah, yeah, just bring the top one to me. <laughs> there you go. Mr. Carroll. Thanks, Steve. I think you're finding out that we actually had a couple of weaklings in Joe and Anthony, and Steve actually, it's pretty interesting having a real live man and not a man trapped in a little boy bodies like Joe and Anthony were. Well, we set out to haze him, embarrass him, kind of make him earn his keep, but then we realized he could actually kind of be an asset. He can reach things that are really high up and he dresses well. <laughs> That's one feminine bag you got there. Pretty much, right? Yeah. But you know, the hazy with Steve ain't going so well. Maybe this, carrying it around all day. He's got to carry it everywhere he goes. Finally, maybe he'll be in battle. Oh, that's perfect. Yo, Steve, get in here. <laughs> this is going to be great. This is going to be great. Steve, Just you have care. to walk around with this all day today. Awesome. Now I got two bags. This is great. Thanks. Well, that's rough, but it's their way of accepting me into their, their little group, and, you know, it'll work out in the end. All right, Frank, about ready to start? I want to get out of here. Yeah, I, I want to get out of here, too. I'm starving. At least that other idiot always used to bake for me. What do you guys ever do for me? Hey, Mr. Carroll, I made you a cinnamon roll. It's fresh from the oven, man. It's just for you. Really? You're going to love it. Well, the hazing didn't go so well, so we sent Steve out to a game. Gave us a chance, me, Evan, and Matt, to go out to... A little uh, nice restaurant that we think Matt might enjoy. All right, Matt, you're going to love this place. Right, Evan? <laughs> no. <laughs> you're going to love this place. You ready? I am excited. Uh, good trip. Here we go. We all like to just have meat and potatoes. Everybody does. But Brad and I often like to mix in some veggies with it. You know, it's healthy. It's a nice, tasteful thing to eat. It's good for you. So we decided that we wanted Matt to experience the same thing. You know, I just wanted to see if he would actually notice that we were going to Veggie World and that maybe he would one of these days just eat a piece of lettuce, which is basically water anyway. <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Veggie World. What? Why? Why you do that? You know what's great about him? He didn't break character. He kept on the, the Brzgalov uh, accent thing, which I thought was pretty impressive for him. You know, he's, he's talking about saving shots now and being a goalie. Hey, good luck. Go for the AHL. I'm sure the Connecticut Whale will take him. Oh, they they no tell me. We, we go there. We, we get to parking lot. I see veggie. Oh, very, very, very bad. They, they very mean to me. Uh, maybe we could, you know, cram some in his steak, you know, between two steaks when he's not looking and will accidentally eat them. I, I, I don't understand what, uh, why they do this to me. I, I work hard, I stay late, I stop shot, I do a anything they want me to do. And they, they, they take me to a place, they, they tell me we go to Brass's Steakhouse with, with the many different meats and uh, they, they, they bring me to the place with the many green things. Ugh. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Big meeting today. You can see all the math. Don't worry about it. I crunched the numbers for you. All you need to know, pyrotechnics, one year anniversary, animals, boom. Keyword, boom. Why? Animals, elephant, turkeys. They're gonna be, they're gonna know what's going on. It's a trap, they're gonna say no. You know they're gonna do it, ignore it. Then we're gonna go to the TNT. We got the rockets, we got the explosions. The racks, they'll probably survive, don't worry about it. Then, when we finally let those suckers up, boom, 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 boom. One year anniversary special. What does any of this have to do with sports? Matt, you're, you're supposed to be rushing, not stupid. There's a baseball, there's a hockey puck, there's a bat. What are you thinking? Very exciting. I, I, I like explosion very much, and I think fire good for show. A great idea. Um, you know, a lot of lights and a lot of explosives uh, would be a lot of fun for this show. Show the energy of the show. Someone had mentioned uh, working with farm animals too. We could even incorporate those with the explosions. Maybe put some explosions directly on the animals. Uh, Mr. Carroll, um, is that an elephant? Because I don't think my uncle Randy has an elephant on his farm. You know, I came up with a lot of things. I don't know if the guys took to him too much. Pyrotechnics, flares, setting off fireworks. I think that's all great. I don't know what the problem is. They keep on saying we can't do it. It's never gonna work. It's never gonna work. Cows don't talk to the turkeys. Well, as you can see, here's I-84, here's the safe zone. This, as you can see, is what's gonna happen after we blow everything up. 
This is going to be key right here, scouting this location. This is going to be very, very hard. Accent easy do, short time. Oh shit. Very nice. The new guy, can he bring the cow and the elephant and the ducks and the chickens and the rats and the mice? That's what everything's going to be determined by. Super Bowl 46 is in the books and there's a ton to break down, so Brad, let's get right to it and we'll start with the last four minutes or so. Another wild ending to a Super Bowl. You know, it's crazy, but when you're in, in that situation, down by a couple of points and you're taking the field with that much time left, you're actually looking forward to going on the field. And if you're a Giants fan, you couldn't feel any better as Eli Manning strolled out there. You knew, and I think everyone did, that Eli was going to score a touchdown on that drive. The only question was, were they going to leave enough time for Tom Brady to come back and possibly do his own magic? We all know the play that set it all up. 38 yards to Mario Manningham. Perfect pass, perfect catch. Got his feet inbounds. Just a great play. From there, it was all Giants. We'll talk about Amar Bradshaw in a minute. But he scored probably the most awkward touchdown in Super Bowl history. He did, and I, I think that'll lead to our first debate on this. Uh, I, you wrote a great thing on your blog last night about the uh, scoring too early, giving Tom Brady a chance. And I certainly understand that argument, but I was worried, if, if I'm a Giant fan, about remember Tony Romo in the playoffs a few years ago not catching the snap on a fumble. I think if you're tied, you absolutely waste as much time. But I could certainly see the argument of not wanting the game to come down to one play and possibly messing it up. Absolutely. I mean, yes, it's a pretty much an extra point at that point, but anything can happen. You see it all the time. That's why in overtime and end game situations, teams will kick the ball on third down because they want all that time. They want that extra down to make sure if anything does happen that they have another down to recuperate. But in this situation, I think you have to take the knee right there because, like we all saw, Tom Brady had a minute to go down the field. And if people are actually making catches on that final drive, Brady actually gets the team at least closer than the 50-yard line. And who knows what's going to happen. Ahmad Bradshaw, right before he was going to get the handoff from Eli Manning, Eli Manning was screaming at him, go down, go down, go down. A Matt Bradshaw, no one will ever really know, except for him, what was going through his mind. He burst through the line, stopped at the one, turned, and then fell backwards into the end zone. For me, it seemed a little like it was all the individual gl glory right there, because you could actually see Chris Snee, the offensive guard, he's waving at Matt Bradshaw not to score as well. Bradshaw had to know what the situation was. If he goes down there, Tom Brady has 20 seconds instead of almost a full minute to go downfield. That changes everything. Luckily for the Giants, even luckier for Ahmad Bradshaw, Brady couldn't do it. The Giants won the Super Bowl. He gets the game-winning touchdown, but again, very, very awkward. At the very least, if you're going to... Uh get instructed by your coaches and teammates to do something, you should probably do it. It's only the world championship on the line, right? That's, that's the thing. If Eli Manning is telling you before you take the handoff to go down, go down, take a knee. Yes, I, I understand all about momentum, but he stopped. He stopped at the one. He could have went down. And you know what? They could have scored on the next play anyway. Exactly. So, Amar Bradshaw, we don't, like I said, we don't know what was going through his mind. Maybe think about the team a little bit more. And then two drives by the Patriots in which they don't score end up being the difference. First, the drive right before the Giants score, Brady has an open Wes Welker. If you get two hands on the ball, you really have to make that grab, especially for Wes Welker, who's considered one of the better wide receivers in the entire league. He has to make that play. The throw was not a good one. Let's throw that out right, right there. Wes Welker's taken a lot of heat. Most of it's coming from himself. He's saying he cost the team the Super Bowl. That's tough to say because there's a lot of plays, a lot of points were left on the board that could have been there. So this doesn't come down to Wes Welker, but if you get your hands on the ball, you got to make the grab. He didn't. That kept the Giants in the game. Exactly, and then they get the ball back, a couple drops like we talked about, and then one last heave. The Patriots are this close yep. from the craziest ending maybe in the history of sports, never mind the Super Bowl. When the ball was in the air, admittedly, I thought it was going to be caught, not even off a tip. First thought, this is going to be caught. Then when it gets tipped, Gronkowski on the television original showing looked a lot closer than it actually was. Gronkowski, it seemed like, just missed the ball. When they showed the replay, it was definitely, he pretty much had no chance of getting it. But it was the closest Hail Mary that wasn't completed that I've seen. 
And in that moment, in that situation, just imagine if that was actually completed, it would have been pandemonium, but it was dropped. Again, a couple of drops on that, on that series, killed the Patriots. Tom Brady, he had two great drives in this game, end of the first half, beginning of the second half, but then he was outplayed by Eli Manning. A real prick on, on Gronkowski, something that annoyed me. I want to see your take on it. Everybody said if he was healthy, the Patriots win this game going away. I looked it up, week four. He had nine catches for 101 yards, and uh, last I looked, the Giants won that game. You know, great point. And, you know, Gronkowski, he was slow. He was not quick out of the box. He was not effective at all. Aaron Hernandez picked up his game a lot. He did have the touchdown. He did have the drop on that final drive. But he picked up the slack for Gronkowski. And you know what? Just having Gronkowski out there, somebody has to account for him. So it's not like he was doing nothing in the game, but he definitely wasn't the force that he was earlier this season. That obviously ankle injury bothered him. Would it have made a difference? Not sure. We'll never know if it would have or not. And one thing that did make difference, I thought the momentum swings were crazy, especially early. The Patriots look like they're going to get blown out early. Like you said, end of the first half, early second half. They look like they're going to blow the Giants out. But talk a little bit about the two teams just coming back at each other the way they did. Yeah, you know, first of all, a lot of points were left on the board. We talked about it. The Giants dominated this game until the last drive in the first half. They should have been up by a lot more. They weren't. I said at halftime, if Tom Brady goes down the field and scores a touchdown, the Patriots are going to be on their way to winning this game. That's the way I thought it was going to go. When he went 16 for 16 with the two touchdown drives, all I'm thinking is the Patriots are going to win this game. Obviously, the defense of the Giants stepped up after that. But those two drives could have set the tone for everything. There was two adjustments in the second half the Giants had to make. They had to stop Tom Brady. They had to stop Aaron Hernandez. And on that first drive, they didn't do either. But after that, the Giants defense stepped up. Justin Tuck had a big sack on the final drive. They played well enough to win this game. Anytime you hold the Patriots to 17 points, that's an awesome job. Somebody who can never be held down is Brad Carroll with the final rant. You know, the best part about watching the Giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl was immediately after where you could see all these fake fans come out of the woodwork going on Facebook a minute later saying, hey, my team won, or hey, the Jets stink. If you're worrying about going on Facebook or if you're worrying about the New York Jets, you're not a true Giants fan. You're actually pathetic, and you need to take a hike. The worst part, I saw a Facebook fan actually change their picture to Tom Brady. You're a Giants fan. Why do you even care what Tom Brady is doing? Root for your team. Don't worry about going on online and telling strangers what you're up to. Nobody cares. And by the way, the halftime show, some singer named M.I.A. came out, gave the finger. You know what, NFL? Put a, a clause in their damn contract that says if you do that, you have to pay a million dollars. And if they don't want to sign, that's it. They're not on the show. That simple. That's a final take and that's a final rant. You're